Thanks, Danica. Thanks, everyone. And thanks, Ebby, for putting this excellent event on in a beautiful venue. So, yes, the Dante project is our focus at Terra Metals. Uh, we're currently in the middle of a 10,000 meter RC drilling program, which is pretty exciting. We started at 4,000 meters, we expanded to 7,000 meters. Uh, we then started drilling our first uh, couple of holes and targets, and we decided to expand again to 10,000 meters. Uh, we did raise a little bit of capital just before that to in allow us the capacity to expand uh, as we wanted to without having to go back to the market. Uh, we've continued to do so. So we have about six, 7,000 meters of samples at the lab worth of drilling right now, uh, and we should start receiving some of those samples back very soon. Uh, we're also having another 4,000 meters of drilling underway. The team's out there at the moment uh, on site right now, and I am traveling up, up to site again on Thursday uh, to see the last couple of targets drilled there. So this is us. We're in the West Mosgraves region of uh, Western Australia, just near the border of Northern Territory, uh, South Australia and West Australia. And I'll uh, just jump to the next slide. So for the people that don't know us, we did just rebrand from GCX Metals to Terra Metals. So you'd be forgiven for not uh, knowing the name. Uh, we have about a 15 million market cap. We've got a, a couple of million dollars in the bank. Uh, we've, we've already expensed quite a bit of the cost of the drilling program uh, at the moment. And uh, we have Tribeca, our largest shareholder. So uh, we have Ben Cleary on the board and also Hayden Smith uh, from, from Tribeca. Uh, and also Ian Middlemiss is our chairman from the Apollo Group, where our, our corporate office is uh, in Perth at the moment. Your thing is going in the heart. Yeah. So here, this is why I'm here, the Dante Project. Uh, I had run this project as a, in a private company uh, for most of last year, the first half of last year, and my job was to go and get it sold uh, into a listed vehicle and to come through with the asset to run that listed vehicle uh, and, and lead uh, the development of this project. Uh, it is an excellent project. It's what attracted me uh, to this and, and why I wanted to go out somewhere that people consider to be remote, like the West Musgrave region. Uh, it is one of the last frontiers. I hear Dave speaking up about being in Northern Canada or we're in the opposite end of that spectrum, we're in the West Musgrave in the Gibson Desert. Uh, but I tell you right now, it doesn't seem remote when you're out there. We've got uh, the airstrip here on our tenement. BHP are building a $1.7 billion mine, uh, about 15 k's to the south of us. They're flying all of their people into the airstrip that's on <coughs> our tenement, and we can fly directly in as well. We also have a house and there's a town uh, on the tenement. All of our targets are within uh, four or five kilometres of the airstrip. So. Uh, we're in a pretty good position, infrastructure is excellent, and there's a lot more infrastructure coming into the region, including large processing facilities uh, over the next little while. The BHP mining and Nevo Babel is a 400 million tonne deposit, it's nickel and copper and platinum, palladium and gold in sulphide. Uh, this, this province does produce big uh, giant uh, copper, nickel and platinum group element sulphide deposits, uh, these magmatic sulphide deposits. That's part of what we're chasing at Dante Project. You can see that we're about you know, just 15 k's from Nebo Babel and 10 kilometers from uh, the Sukuth deposit. So Sukuth is a copper dominant uh, magmatic sulfide deposit. It's about 160 million tons. So these, these are large and there's a cluster of them around out. This is our blue tenement here. All the pink is uh, BHP, so we're landlocked by BHP. Not many juniors who can say that. And we've got Rio Tinto out here in blue. And we've got Cobalt Mining, which is Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates, uh, artificial intelligence backed exploration company there as well. So we've got a crown jewel sitting right in the middle of this excellent uh, piece of geology, which is producing monster deposits. And we've got $15 million worth of historical exploration expenditure on the ground, um, but barely any drilling. So we had a lot of great targets. I planned the drill program for my desktop uh, almost without even having been to site uh, before we went to market. And we're in the middle of drilling that program right now. So here is the main part of our project, Dante project. We've got 23 kilometers of outcropping high grade uh, mineralized reefs. So these reefs uh, contain platinum, palladium, gold, vanadium, titanium, and copper. Uh, we're the first company to identify really that there's copper potential in these reefs. For some reason, historically, even companies like WMC who own, who own the ground, BHP own the ground, uh, a group of juniors, uh, Anglo-American own some of the ground. Tracker Resources had the ground for seven years looking only for copper and never drilled a single hole into the reef. So it's quite amazing. Uh, we're drilling out the Hyperion Reef right now. Uh, sorry, not right now. We just drilled seven kilometers 
uh, along the Hyperion Reef. These, these are massive targets. We just drilled three kilometers of the Creus Reef, and we're going to drill about two kilometers of the Oceanus Reef down here. And this Cronus uh, prospect up in the north is what the majors are, are looking at and interested in at the moment. It's a big magmatic sulfide uh, mineralized intrusion that has had five holes in it historically. It's one of the family of intrusions that Nebo Babel and Sukuth, these big magmatic neighbors are, um, where we're confident that it is one of those. Uh, and, and the five holes that went into it get hundreds of meters of disseminated copper sulfides and also lots of anomalous gold and palladium. Uh, so it's a copper gold uh, dominant sulfide system. It's seven kilometers long, a kilometer and a half wide, and uh, only have five holes, all of which is mineralization. So we're drilling this thing out for the first time systematically, a couple of drill fences right across the intrusion. That shallow RC drilling program is aimed to inform into a deeper diamond drilling program. We've just received uh, $435,000 of EIS co-funding from the West Australian government to undertake that deep diamond drilling there and also to undertake a high powered EM survey over the project, which we're confident will reveal uh, new conductive uh, sulfide targets, which will feed into the next phases of our drill program. Uh, but like I said, we expanded the drill program here. Uh, we've believed for some time that the reefs here have copper potential. Uh, when I went out there and spent the first week out there doing reconnaissance work, we immediately saw seven or eight Gossens, which were enriched in copper, uh, which had never been mapped despite the 15 to $20 million worth of uh, money and you know, expenditure and work that had been conducted on the project uh, over time. And we've now drilled 33 holes into that reef over 10 kilometers, and we've got a couple of kilometers to go left at the end of the program. Not a single assay back yet. Uh, like I said, everything's at the lab, almost everything. Uh, and we expect the results will start coming back soon and that every two weeks for the next two and a half to three months uh, we'll, we'll see more results coming through. So this is an example of some of those gossens that uh, seem to have been uh, missed in, historically. So we had a theory that um, these gossens have been missed because they uh, are soft and they've eroded away. Uh, they're on the hanging wall side of the, the reefs and they're just under a little bit of shallow cover. So. We thought maybe the hanging wall leading up to the main basal reef might contain some copper. That's one of the hypo hypotheses that we're out there testing at the moment. But we know the basal, in the basal reef is enriched in uh, palladium, platinum, gold, and copper. These are some of the numbers here. You can see they speak for themselves. Uh, you know, the vanadium and titanium as an accessory thing there is super high grade on their own. So, you know, running an average of 1% vanadium with the precious metals and, and copper as well. This is Cronus. So, you know, Cronus as a magmatic intruder being seven odd kilometers long interpreted, it, it uh, has a thousand auger geochemical drill holes over the top of it. So it, it's quite an advanced target. Uh, these stars are EM anomalies. Uh, we've got airborne EM over the whole project. And uh, we've got a you know big gold anomaly, big palladium anomaly, a big copper anomaly, and a big nickel anomaly. And they're in their own right, they're probably worthy of drill targets, but we've got them all in the same uh, prospect. The gold alone is running up to 0.7 grams per tonne, just in soils or auger, and the copper is uh, running, you know, up to almost half a percent just in soils. And palladium, you know, this this whole thing here is, you know, most of it is over a 0.1 gram per tonne just in soil. So it's pretty impressive as a geochemical anomaly, and it's huge, and we like that. We have a theory about where we believe the larger concentration and higher grade concentration of copper and uh, gold in sulfide is going to be in this, and that's what we're working to unlock at the moment. So it's not just what's sticking out of the ground. We are drilling a lot of low hanging fruit, and that's you know easy for us as a junior company to uh, go into the project uh, picking the low hanging fruit. Uh, but we have, as I said, full coverage airborne EM. Uh, there are heaps and heaps of uh, sulfur conductive anomalies here which have ne never been drilled. Uh, we just received the funding from the West Australian government to drill high power to do high powered EM over this. This is all low powered EM, and we know from our colleagues in the West Musgrove region that some of these uh, uh, mag these magmatic sulfide deposit deposits, such as Sukuth, were not seen by the low powered EM. So even though we've got 30 or 40 uh, high priority EM anomalies in the project already uh, from that low powered EM, the high powered EM we believe is going to yield even more. So there's a pipeline of targets here that are going to continue to yield value over the years to come. Uh, but we are pretty uh, bullish on what we're drilling right now, and we're excited to start putting some news out and some results out in the coming weeks and months. 
So that's us. We're drilling. You know, we, like I said, we've got lots and lots of data that that all goes out the window when you're drilling. The most important thing is we're going to be delivering new data. We've got a large land position, the crown jewel that we believe in the West Musgrave region, landlocked by BHP, huge amount of investment and in infrastructure coming into the region. Uh, we're copper focused with precious metals as well. It's a great time to be drilling and exploring for something like that right now. Uh, we are a first mover and we have a district scale opportunity here that we own 100% of and we think is very exciting and a standalone in the West Musgrave region. So if you want to chat more about it, please come and see me after this. Thanks everyone.